Welcome to Long Story Short. I am Kijan Haynes. We have a great show for you today, but first let's start with a question. Have you ever had an old car in your yard and every day there's a guy that passes a eh, big man? You sell it? You sell it? How much how much you sell any car for away? Now, technically you don't need the car, it's taking up space and you can use the money. But you still don't want to sell it to this guy. I mean, you love the car, you had some good memories there. And you don't want to run in pH with it or worse, strip for parts. So you tell him, I sell it there, but and you give him all kinds of excuses as to why you can't sell it to him. No, no. And basically, I've just explained the government patriotic energies OWTU petrogen refinery saga. Done. Long story short, but no. <laughs> Since I'm required to fill 30 minutes of airtime, I suppose we can get into the nitty gritty. It's not going to be a long story short, but I promise I'll at least try to make it fun. So let's go back a year ago. The PNM was riding low. There was no money to settle union negotiations, lots of job losses since the closure, well, let's say restructuring of Petrogen, and the government really needed a win. Then the refinery was up for sale, and there were a few contenders up for bids, but there was one that stood out. All the facts as presented, cabinet today agreed to select Patriotic Energies and Technologies Company Limited. A company wholly owned by the Oilfield Workers Trade Union. So there are two schools of thought here. You're either, all right, when those who labor hold the reins of power. It is for the mission that was started by the OWTU back in the 1930s and the sustained campaign for our country to gain the commanding heights of our country's economy. Eh, I think that ended a little awkwardly. Finish your thought and we'll help you out with a little oomph. To be in control of our own assets, our own resources, to own it. And to own it, not in any superficial way, but for the ordinary man in the street, the sick and the infirm, the born and the unborn, for future generations, for the people of Trinidad and Tobago to benefit. And we will keep on suffering until we get a... So, <clears throat> sorry. So the other school of thought was, aren't those the same guys who were working there all this time and they're the ones who have it like this in the first place? And the answer would be yes. But if you're the government, most importantly, these guys are paying cash. Patriotic was the only bidder which offered an upfront payment consideration. Their proposal indicated upfront cash of US $700 million for the refinery assets. Beowulf offered no upfront consideration. Flesh's proposal indicated that the only payments to the government would be through taxes. And whatever you may think of the deal, a deal is a deal. Well, not quite. Let's go back to the car metaphor. You see, so this guy really wants to buy the car. And you want to make sure that he's really serious about buying the car and not messing it up once he does. So you have to give him 10 tasks to accomplish, like Hercules, before you can sell it to him. And essentially, that's what the government did here. Government gave the OWTU, now operating under the banner Patriotic Energies and Technologies, 10 requirements to fulfill and some of them we know about others they're not talking about because it's all under a non-disclosure agreement so over the past year with some tweaks along the way they weren't fulfilled and government was losing patience and discussions have been ongoing for more than a year patriotic was given a deadline of october 31st 2020 to submit a final proposal and address some key issues and that brings us to the beginning of the month a few weeks ago. A hastily called press conference on a Saturday to discuss the state of negotiations. Well, the deal between government and Patriotic Energies and Technologies Company Limited for the sale of the Petrotrin refinery has been severed. What we thought would have been an announcement to say that we would have met the requirement was the opposite. And well, that makes one of us. Meanwhile, the rest of the nation is like the fake shock emoji guy. I mean, bless your heart, but when the government wants something done, they do it. And if not, 
eh, it's like proposing to your girlfriend. Just kind of kick the can down the road until you're offered an ultimatum. And that is exactly what is happening here. Is this a puppy show? Exactly. Now it's a good time to introduce the plot twist. Opposition Senator Wademar came to say the government took out a loan and used the refinery as collateral, meaning it couldn't be sold. Senator Mark cited a prospectus and debenture documents, which he said show all the fixed and floating assets of the refinery are tied up with credit holders. Because if the assets, both fixed and floating, have already been tied up by the secured parties and all the creditors, what are you selling? And well, here's what we actually missed here. This story isn't news. Renoka Singh at The Guardian told us about it a year ago. But we like to bust a mark now. So, speaking of. That is the biggest lie, biggest hoax that they have perpetrated on the people of Trinidad and Tobago and on the workers of OWT. Oh, hey, you was wondering when you'd show up. Come on, tell us what you, what you got there. I now have a document in my possession, as I said, on the Patri Patriotic Energy's letterhead dated 29 October 2020. It is now discovered from this document that Patriotic has now offered an upfront payment of 500 million for the assets. So before they had offered the 500 million US, they're now offering, I'm sorry, they offered 700 million, now offering 500 million, 200 million less. Now keep in mind, these contracts are supposed to be under wraps. But here we are. And now you're caught up. But okay, the OWTU is offering a lot less money than before. Why is that? This, we responded to this bid, this offer for this RFP. That's last year we would have put in the bid. At the end of this month, those assets would, be, would have been out of, would be out of operation for two years. Two full years, 24 months. You stop your vehicle, take it off, your working vehicle, and leave it out of, up in the garage, park up wherever, or even the weather for two months and try to start it and see what will happen. Ah, look at you guys getting in on the metaphor. So the OWTU and the Prime Minister spent the rest of this week saying, look, this is an A-B conversation, see your way out of it. The opposition leader, however, reading from the proposal is not a big deal. And for one, yeah, I'm happy to, to get a little glimpse into something that's supposed to be under lock and key. But you see, it's one thing to have access to information. You also need to accurately interpret it because the opposition leader, one, continues to find conspiracy theories everywhere, and two, continues to talk like the contract has already been signed. It's important to remember that this was denied. So meanwhile, everything she's thrown out, the Prime Minister and Ansel Roger have been ready with a rebuttal. Traffic Bureau has indicated that they will provide fuel supply and offtake for the refinery. And that's a fundamental part of the offer, because if they don't have crude, and crude in a, from a source that is uh, useful to their bid, then they have no proposal. Why do they want to oppose our tank farms? It's just patriotic and for and on behalf of the people of Trinidad and Tobago putting in a bid for both assets because they go hand in hand. Is it true that Traffic Euro also requires that all its assets of paria be transferred to them at the close of the agreement to finance the restart of the refinery. That it is no, there's no way that the OWT will be in conspiracy to hand over the assets of Trinidad and Tobago that belongs to Trinidad and Tobago to any multinational. They have been subject to investigations relating to corruption, market manipulation. Indeed, Traffic Guru would have been embraced um, under her tenure as Prime Minister. Man, look at them fighting side by side, back to back, like two low budget superheroes. They're gaming on the scam, you idiot! Back to back! <laughs> and now they're both accusing the opposition leader of trying to sabotage the whole deal. And the behavior of the opposition leader in the last turnaround is meant to undermine the effort of the government and the private sector, this, in this case, labor in making what we are hoping is a far-reaching Because if patriotic, in the face of what had occurred, 
rose to the occasion and to put back economic activity in the South and throughout the country, the leader of the opposition, the Honorable Leader, should be happy for that and not try to stymie the process. See, this is an interesting tactic because that Petrogen deal could have been collapsing anyway. And by most accounts, people felt it already had. But we would have never known because of the non-disclosure. But with the opposition leader busting the mark, the union and the government have a great scapegoat. So if it collapses, they'll just, as they tend to do, blame Kamala. See, if she just sat on the sidelines and watched the fireworks from a safe distance, the government and the union would have been in deep, deep doo-doo. And the opposition leader would have come out smelling like a rose. Meanwhile, we have until the end of the month to know for sure if government will accept or reject the latest bid by Patriotic Energies, also known as OWTU. But by the way, the car is still rusting away in the yard. We'll be back.